Squad Alpha drop successful, proceeding to target. I love the Clone Wars, and this is an early episode from Captain Rex's history. He's in his phase one armor, he's got a small squad, and he's off on a secret mission to investigate this weird object in an ice cavern. Deep below the surface of a small moon, somewhere that's classified. The concept started when DecoQuest asked me to pick something from their latest Frontier. Now, I've missed the Frontier and the Kickstarter, but they're both on Late Pledge, links down below, and I picked these, this structure. It just seemed otherworldly to me, and at the same time, I got a new Creality Ender 3 S1 Pro that they sent me, and this video is showing exactly what you can do with a 3D printer, just a filament printer. You can create the most amazing scenes. But first, I actually had to put it all into Blender and create the scene. Now, I use various stalactite and stalagmite files from Thingiverse, and again, I'll link them down below. I, I just went in and searched and found loads of free ones, and then I distorted them, twisted them, and created a circular ice cavern to go around this great structure. At the same time, I sliced it all, diced it all, and got it so it fitted in my 3D printer. First up, I printed the structure in the center. <laughs> these are long prints. Each of these prints was well over a day, and I had three prints, I had the center and the two ice cavern top and bottoms. Now they were exciting to print. I bought clear filament and I've never used it. So I cracked it out. Here we go, clear filament. It's not actually clear, is it? It's kind of white, but it has a translucent look to it that is absolutely beautiful and spot on for ice. And eventually, after several days of printing, I was done. These are gonna be so cool. The trouble with such long prints is you're not going to reprint them when you get them wrong. And I didn't quite get these hollowed enough. So there were a couple of places where the ice and the central building just intersected. Whoops. Nothing a despite pen tool won't fit. Quick aside, before DecoQuest got in touch, I'd actually printed this free SDL from this particular Kickstarter and Frontier. It's very simple. Drop a battery in drop an LED on top, the right way around. You've got a little bit of scatter terrain. Really cute. And I'd already printed it, so I thought I'd show it off to you. For big long prints like this, I often put a brim on them just to make sure they're well and truly stuck to my build plate. So I took that off, took it outside and sprayed it matte black. It's just car paint, spray car paint. It's all gonna get covered in ice. It doesn't need that much on it. And then gave it a top down squirt of white primer. This is just going to catch the top and give it an icy white colour. Now for an icy glitter. To glue it, I'm going to use knock landscaping glue because it dries slightly glossy. And then I used extra fine glitter. Now, I've got to admit, this didn't work as well as I wanted. I've got loads of really good ice sparkly products, but I wanted to do something that people could find easily and glitter seemed like it but it does just look like round dots of sparkle, whereas some of the others look more icy. A quick blitz of a clear gloss outside sealed it all in. Now to make the ice look more, well, icy. It's a little bit white at the moment. When you look on any image search, you'll find ice looks slightly more blue. Now I could do it in Photoshop, but actually I can just as easily do it with some colored UV resin. Why UV resin? Well, it's clear and the colorants I'm using in it are specifically for resin and they're also translucent. Plus, I can set it up with a UV torch and my UV curing chamber that I made. Before I put it in that chamber though, I put a small amount of UV resin around the base. Now the observant of you will have noticed there's an acetate sheet under this and I made sure I cured the edges so it didn't leak out and I was able to therefore fill the middle up like it was a pond. This is actually where I had a bit of an oops. This stage, fine. Went under the curing chamber, no leakages, absolutely fine. 
but I decided to do a deep pour of the UV resin. And that would have been fine had I used a UV curing chamber, but it was the end of the night and I was a bit impatient. So when it was done and I'd used the torch a bit, I picked it up and put it on the side. So in the morning, the sun would come up and put some more UV light on it. And when I picked it up, air bubbles rushed into the areas that weren't quite set. Not to worry, I thought, I can fix this. I'll turn it upside down, prop it on these boxes, use my Despy pen to dremel through the top layer of the resin, because it's set underneath and on top, but not in the middle, and then pour some more resin in. Job done. But the bubbles weren't staying filled. And then I realized, oh, it's running out the bottom. <laughs> And of course, I hadn't filled the holes on the top. I hadn't gone through, but there were holes around the edges where just the resin hadn't gone on and filled it. And I was just pushing resin onto the surface below, all the way down my structure, but I didn't want to have blue resin on it. After some hurried torching, UV torching, I decided, whatever, it's the end of the day. I turned it the right way around, put some paper towels underneath and just left it to drip back the right way up overnight. The advantage of leaving things overnight is you think about them and actually I thought it's a bit dull this structure everything else is dripping ice cavern surely it should be icy too but I didn't want it to be the bluey ice so I decided to just drip neat UV resin over it now it it isn't quite icy and I'm going to put another layer on top but it's a great start to getting some shine on there and I dripped it as if it was dripping from the roof, so I didn't drip it into any of the recesses. So it did flow down very realistically. And when I was done, I left it to drip for 10 minutes whilst I had my breakfast. I've learnt my lesson. Loads of UV chamber time, 10 minutes on each side. Not forgetting the base that caused me all those problems before. I did the top in exactly the same way. And then I tidied up the edges of the ice cavern where the UV resin had kind of flowed out onto the acetate using this Despy electronic pen. I love this pen. It's so much easier than a Dremel. So much smaller, easy to go round, a little bit of finishing off with an emery board. And to make sure it didn't look rough and sanded, just a little bit more UV resin. My, that blue water looks so inviting. Oh wait it's supposed to be ice. Well, I guess I better put some snow or something on it to make it look a little bit more icy because at the moment it looks more like a Pacific blue sea. I started with the glitter, but you know, it just wasn't working for me. It did look too round and dotty. So then I used precision ice and snow, Chrysel snow. Now you may not have this sat on the side like I do, but not to worry, you can use anything from micro balloons, AKA interactive and deluxe materials do those, or even something like bicarbonate of soda. Once I was happy, I drenched it with some isopropyl alcohol and water and then some knock landscaping glue. Whilst that does dry glossy, the powder overpowers it and it does look very matte by the end. I therefore cleaned it off all of the icicles and mopped up any glue that was running off the edge. The clones are from Dark Fire Designs. I printed them at half their supposed size, which is Star Wars Legion scale and stuck the heads on. I tried to make all the heads look slightly up in awe at the structure. A quick foot level and a spritz of white primer and they were ready to hand paint. I only painted two colours, black grey, black looks a bit stark, and intense blue by Vallejo. I tried to go with some 501st markings, but to be honest, they're quite variable at this point in the canon, so Hmm, please don't write and tell me they're wrong. A liberally applied dark grey enamel wash filled out all the details and just brought them to life. I super glued them in place and then all I had to do was use UV resin to glue the top to the bottom and then fill the gap with a little bit more coloured UV resin and I was done. Target. Target located, entering cavern. Comms out, comms out.
Squad Alpha. Mission successful. Target acquired. Returning to base. Out. Thank you for sticking to the end and thank you to my patrons and YouTube channel members without whom I really couldn't do this. If you'd like to subscribe, hit the bell button. You know what to do. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.